Hello and welcome to ZDNet's DIY IT Discovery Series on 3D printing. My name is David Gewertz and today we're going to look at how to download objects from the internet and print them out on your 3D printer. Today's example is this neat little gadget which is a Dremel stand. As you can see it has an angle, it's got a spot in here for holding the Dremel, it's got some spaces in the back for holding some bits and is a very, very useful standalone Dremel stand. I'm also going to show you a bonus thing I found on Thingiverse while I was digging around. It's this thing, which is a cord holder. All you do is do this right. Come on, pop these things in here. It's this little plastic gadget, and it printed like that on the printer. This little plastic gadget is great for organizing these big thick cords that you use with power tools and for that matter the back of computers and there we go a nice really well organized cord holder so let's look at how it's done so this is a really good starting point thingiverse.com and you'll notice that the two designs are right there on the screen uh, what I'm going to do is take a look at the individual Dremel design and visit both the Dremel design itself and then also, and you can see you can move things around and adjust it. But I'm also going to go down and take a look at someone else who's made the same design and you can see that they, there are examples of this other person's use of the design and how he's gone ahead and made it. So the best thing to do is this is a pre-built design and you just download the file. The file is an STL file. You click download and bring the file down to your desktop like you would download a PDF. So I'm downloading the STL file. My MakerBot is connected to the network over Ethernet. So the very first thing I'm going to do is locate the printer on the network. Now it's time to customize the settings. Now in this case you'll notice that I'm using the quick settings and all I've really done, the most important thing to do is choose quality high because I don't want it, I want a better quality. I'm willing to let it take the time to print. And I've also turned on raft and support. Raft is what holds it down to the print bed and you should turn that on all the time. And support is kind of an interesting one because if you do it wrong, support can be a real pain. But because there are pieces of, of this model overhanging other pieces, it's important to turn on support so that those pieces have support as the printer is, is generating the plastic layers and they don't fall down or they don't collapse into, into the lower layers. So I've gone ahead and hit add file to bring in the model into uh, the replicator slicing program. This is essentially a slicing program that will convert the 3D model into um, the layers that it needs to print. In this instance though what I'm showing you is that you can move the model around on the bed and you can adjust it, you can uh, make it bigger, smaller, change its location, reset it, make sure it's flat, that sort of stuff. And essentially what you're doing is you're positioning the model on a representation of the actual physical print bed. Next it's time to preview. And preview is really a misnomer for an incredibly complex process called slicing. Pretty much every 3D printer has to take a 3D model, which is, is generally positions and vectors, and convert them into a series of layers. Think of it as a piece of paper stacked on top of another piece of paper. They're instructions that tell the, um, the printer exactly where to move the print head, exactly where to move the printing base, and where to extrude material. And so what's going to happen is it goes through the process of generating and extruding this material. Now I have sped up the preparing and processing part of this thing, which is really the part of the software um, that is doing all of that incredible calculations. I've sped that up. That, that was basically a 10 minute process and I sped it up to five or six seconds just so that you didn't have to sit here watching it. Now this is a relatively complex model and so it it does take the computer quite a long time to really regenerate this thing in this format. Now, what you're going to look at here is a view in the preview of the model, and I'm going to 
show you each of the layers. And so you can look around, you can see the um, uh, the the um, the decking, the the base of the printer on the edge. You can see the excuse me, the base of the model on the edge, and you want that everywhere because you want to make sure that this thing is is very well secured to the uh, the print base. I've <laughs> I've I've done that wrong, and I've had some really bad prints, and and we'll talk about that in a future series. And you can also sort of see all of these layers as these layers are slowly built back up this is a representation of those layers one layer at a time and this is the process the printer is going to do as you can see over the course of about 15 hours so this is not a fast process in terms of its printing but you get a nice little thing out the end and if you start the night before and nothing goes wrong you're going to have a very nice little object when you're finished so now let's print it this process has also been sped up quite a bit. This is another five or six minutes of processing time. In this case, it's converting the uh, sliced uh, data and it's sending it down to the printer in a standard CNC code called G code. And it's sending it to the printer. Once it sends it to the printer, the printer needs to heat up at varying stages, needs to move itself into a homing position at various points and then it starts to print. Now what's very cool about this printer, as you can see, is that there is a, a connection that allows me to see on a webcam what it's doing. So you can actually watch it as it begins to go. And that's where we're at. The printer is going to start. It's what is about to become a 15 hour process. And here we are with the final product. It's got a few rough edges that I have yet to sand off, although it's certainly usable in this form. Uh, the print took a little over 15 hours overnight to produce, and uh, it's, a, it's a neat little device that I'm going to be using to hold my Dremel up. Uh, the print of the cord holder took another hour and a half to two hours to produce. So there you are. My name is David Gewurz for ZDNet's DIYIT. And once again, I want to give a shout out to the MakerBot folks for making uh, their use of the replicator possible. And I'll see you next time. There's more to come.